We're having a baby shower, but this isn't gonna be like any baby shower we've ever done before. This is going to be a virtual baby shower, and you can participate it right there in your own home. Um, it's going to be on Saturday, May 23rd. Um, Sarah and Aaron, they're registered at Target and Amazon, so that's where you can shop. And then uh, you can drop off uh, the gifts to the church on May 23rd, that's a Saturday, between 12 and 1. Um, or you can mail it directly to their house. We can provide you with that address if you need it. And um, they're going to collect all the gifts and then they're going to live stream her opening all her gifts um, on our church YouTube page. There's also a Zoom link if you need that. Uh, just contact us and we can give you the Zoom link for that. But we want to support this. This is their very first child and we want to honor her and honor him and uh, provide for them and their new little ones. So we hope you'll join us. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact the church and we'll give you more information. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We want to see you and your family. And so where we would normally post pictures of us watching the service, moms, I want you to find your absolute favorite picture that you have with your kids and post that picture in the comments section. We would love to see all the moms with all their kids on this Mother's Day. Good morning and happy Mother's Day, and uh, we're so thankful that you've joined us this morning, 
And uh, I hope that you enjoyed that opening hymn by the Shways this morning, the Schwenders and the Clays, uh, the cousins all mixed together and sing the Victory in Jesus. That's my mother's favorite hymn, so I hope she enjoyed that this morning. And great to have my dad and my mom with us uh, in service this morning. And I hope that uh, we'll have a great service today together. In just a moment, we're going to hear another special. But before we do, would you have a word of prayer with me and ask God's blessing on today's service? Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so very thankful that you've allowed us to be here for this service today. Lord, I thank you for the purpose in which we are gathering today to honor the mothers. Lord, the Bible has much to say about mothers. Lord, I I think of the book of Proverbs. I think of just all the instances in the scriptures of mothers. It's reading about Hannah again this morning and Ruth and uh, Lord, just so these so many noble mothers in scriptures and uh, great people to attain to, great people to lift up as our heroes. And Lord, may we just, as we go through this service, not only raise up those memorials of women and mothers of the past, but may we as mothers, may we as uh, ladies, us as husbands, may we uh, lift up our mothers and lift up those that are raising our children and be those kind of husbands that we should be. And Lord, I just pray as we go throughout this service that you would receive all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. Lord, thank you for uh, the ability to open the word, the freedom and liberty we have to come online and continue these services while we're having this uh, time of quarantine and separation. And Lord, I just ask now that for the next few moments, all distractions would be put aside and we would pay attention to the singing and the, uh, the worship this morning, the Bible reading, and of course the message from your word. And Lord, I just ask now that your name would be honored, glorified, and lifted up, exalted, that you may draw all men unto yourself. In your precious name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, we're excited about the next little while in the service. At this time, we're going to hear another special uh, from another one of our mother-daughter duos. Fill their hearts and minds with the knowledge from 
Well, we've come to that time of the service where uh, we're going to take up our offering. And it's so weird doing this every week. I told somebody the other day, we're not taking up our offering because there's nobody here to take it from. Uh, but if you'll drop it off this week, we'll take it from you. If you mail it in, we will take it. Uh, if you put it online, we will transfer it over and we will take it to our bank account uh, here at the church. Uh, but we, we do have the general fund. We do have missions still. We need to get that missions back up. If you could give to missions, please, 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 I'm begging you, uh, continue to give to missions. Our general fund needs to go up. Uh, our missions needs to go up. Our building fund, if anybody has a million dollars, we could use it. Uh, but we got a lot of projects in the in the pipeline here, so uh, help us out with offerings today. Of course, you can drop it off, you can mail it in, you can text it in, and uh, you can uh, give it online at bbclatrobe.com. You can see all that information there on the screen. Take the next 30 to 45 seconds, as we said every week, make it a point of emphasis with your family to give your offering uh, today. However that is, maybe you send it online, maybe uh, you'll make the check out and put it in an envelope. Uh, somebody told me the other day they put their offering in, uh, they let their children put the numbers in and hit send. And uh, so I think that's a great idea so your children know that you're giving out of your paycheck every week. And uh, I think those are all great things. Commit thou to faithful men that they may be able to teach others also. Let's take up this morning's offering, just another 30 or 45 seconds here from Miss Lauren and uh, a beautiful music and make sure let's get that offering to where it needs to go. God bless you uh, as you give. Let's pray and ask God's blessing on the offering. Lord, I pray that every dollar that is given today, by every child, by every teenager, by every adult, by every uh, prime timer of this church, whatever can be given. Lord, I, I know that some have told me they can only give $10 right now or they can give $50 right now, but Lord, whatever we can give, may we just give it to you and, and Lord, just let you take care of uh, how it's used and how it's multiplied for your service. So Lord, I pray that we will uh, take the time and we will give. We will see the importance of giving. We will teach the importance of giving. And may every single one of us that is listening today be faithful to give back to you. In your precious name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Take just a little more time there and ask God's blessing on the offering today and teach your children the importance of giving. story. 
Well, folks, we've come to that time of the service where we share a message from God's Word that He's laid on my heart and uh, been trying to assess the church. You know, it's very hard to assess where the church is at when the church is not together. Uh, I understand how important buildings are and how important property is and those kinds of things, but there is nothing like gathering the church family together. And so sometimes when you're trying to figure out what message ne is next, you're not quite sure where everybody's at. You can kind of sense that in services. So uh, obviously it's pretty easy on Mother's Day because we're together with our mothers. And I'm thankful to have my mom with me. I'm thankful to have the mother of my children, uh, my wife, Rachel, with us today also. My dad's here, and uh, he doesn't mother anything. Uh, he's not a very good mother at all. Uh, a few times when I was growing up, he was Mr. Mom. He uh, stayed home here and there in between jobs or whatnot, and he was... Uh, he provided for us while mom was teaching at the school, and uh, so he's had to be mom for a few weeks at a time, not, not very long though, uh, but I, I'm thankful for moms. I'm thankful for your influence. I'm thankful for everything uh, that mothers stand for, the, the reason God's given us mothers. Moms, make sure you stay uh, at the end of the service, be paying attention at the end of the service. I'll make the announcement again. Uh, at the end of the service, but I want you to make sure you stay tuned because Miss Rachel has a bunch of stuff that she bought at the store the other day, and she said she wants to give it all away. And uh, so there'll be some drawings at the end of the service, and you should win some prizes, and that's going to be exciting, ladies, uh, for all the things uh, that I know that she has for you, and I am excited to see who wins those things. But if you'll take your Bibles this morning, turn to Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs in the 31st chapter. Proverbs chapter 31 ends, obviously, the book of Proverbs. At the beginning, the Bible shows us that Solomon says, my son. He starts off the book with my son. The book ends in chapter 31 in verse number uh, 2, what? My son. It's actually... Uh, what seems to be uh, King Lemuel's mother, and it's, it seems to be in history and, and through research that Lemuel was actually another name for Solomon. And so this is Solomon, and obviously Solomon's mother was Bathsheba. And I think that this is a passage of Scripture 
of Bathsheba telling Solomon what kind of woman, uh, that, uh, what kind of mother he should want for his children, what kind of wife he should want. And obviously by Proverbs chapter 31, Solomon had made some great mistakes in life. He had made some amazing failures uh, when it came to purity. The whole entire book of the Song of Solomon is Solomon's desire to have another woman that he cannot have, uh, that is married, that, is, uh, that has a life, that is successful. And I think Proverbs chapter 31 is him kind of saying, I have all of these wives I have thousands of women around me. I have the king of Egypt gave me a wife. Uh, I have all of these things, all of this stuff. And in Proverbs chapter 31, he shows us that he just really wants a virtuous woman. He just wants a woman that he can call virtuous and that has great character and great integrity. And uh, I I would imagine that Samuel was lacking those things uh, in his own Uh, array of women around him and wives and concubines around him and his mother comes along and and she represents uh, in Proverbs chapter 31 at the beginning there it says the words of King Lemuel the prophecy that his mother taught him that word prophecy isn't necessarily a uh, the idea of telling the future as some would be prophets and and would have prophecy this word prophecy is talking about uh, teachings. This, this is talking about things that God had shown her, things that were uh, important to her. She was passing that on for the future. Uh, it's kind of like a pastor. A pastor can't tell the future, but he's trying to give you advice that will help you in the future. Uh, and so the Bible does call pastors prophets. Uh, that was a gift that he gave to the, to the, uh, to the church. And so it's not ne- necessarily foretelling the future, it's forthtelling the Word of God about the future. Uh, and what God is going to do in the future and, and how he can help you uh, navigate the future. And that's what uh, his mother <laughs> taught him. Uh, and obviously, uh, King Solomon didn't take the advice very well uh, as we see his life. But Bathsheba, I'm sure, uh, was one of those people that uh, couldn't judge Solomon very much or, or felt guilty for judging Solomon because uh, in Solomon's life, uh, it was Bathsheba, and Bathsheba had made the same kind of mistakes of, of not being a virtuous woman at times and, and not uh, being that kind of person that God wanted her to be. Uh, maybe this is a passage of Scripture where in history they knew of somebody like Ruth. Uh, and the Bible says, by the way, that Ruth is the only woman in the Old Testament. She's the only woman in the Old Testament that the Bible calls virtuous. So uh, maybe this is a reference back to the Shulamite woman and Solomon is putting together a a synopsis of the woman that he really loves but is married to a shepherd and and, and really has almost nothing but uh, has a more successful life than even Solomon with all of his silver and gold and all the stuff that he has. And so uh, thinking back to somebody like Ruth who is a virtuous woman, this, this passage of scripture begins to say what kind of woman should this be? What kind of things uh, is this woman, um, repre- what does she represent? What are her characteristics? And, and the first thing I find in, in uh, reference to this woman, uh, to this mother, uh, obviously uh, Solomon's mother is teaching him, and the Bible says, commit thou to faithful men that they may be able to teach others also. One of the things Solomon was was wise, and one of the things he did was pass on wisdom. And so here he is passing on wisdom to all of us. And I would say to the men that when you read the next few verses, 11 through, I think it's 30 verses, 31 verses, when you read verses 11 through 31, don't, don't push it off and say, well, I'm not a woman and I'm not, I'm not going to be virtuous and I don't do those things that the women do. I, let me say this to you. If you're not married, this is the kind of woman you need to find. And if you are married, this is the kind of woman you need to promote. Sometimes I think as men, we think that the women have to do all of this stuff, and then we will appreciate them. And in this passage of Scripture, I'm going to show you at the end, that appreciation is what what motivates her. Appreciation is what uh, spurs her on for her family and for her community. Uh, her love of God and her uh, motivation for the appreciation she received from her own family. But number one, the mother and the wife that 
uh, is, is a virtuous woman and is one of those mothers that uh, you would want and one of those mothers that ladies you should want to be is somebody who's trustworthy, has trustworthiness. Look at verse 11 there if you would. Verse 10 starts off, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. I put down there, she's rare. <laughs> this, this woman is rare. Her price is far above rubies. There weren't rubies sitting on the street. Rubies had to be searched for. Rubies had to be cared for. Rubies had to be cut and prepared so that, that they were precious in the form that they're. These, this is a rare person, this virtuous woman. But the Bible says in verse 11, the heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Verse 12, she will, do good, uh, she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Isn't it amazing that if you're a man in, in this audience today that's listening to me, isn't it amazing the moment that you, in verse 12, she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Isn't it a wonderful blessing if you have a wife and the mother of your children you, you know is going to do good? Always. Always do good. Uh, you're not going to come home and find a bunch of evil there. You're not going to find her out doing evil. The Bible says he, he's able to just trust. Not because uh, he's manufacturing it. It's because she's trustworthy. She's trustworthy. Look at verse number 23. Same point. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. Verse 28, her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtually, but thou excellest them all. Th this passage of scripture shows that she's trustworthy. This isn't manufactured. This isn't something where you have to prop somebody up and say, oh, you're a great mother, and the children are in disarray, the home is in disarray, the husband is disorganized and, and, and kind of flying by the sea of his pants and you know, and, and that's, the Bible says, that's not what this woman is about. This woman is trustworthy. She's there when it counts. She's there when, it's, when things are down. She's there when uh, she's needed most. And I think of the two women on the platform with me today. And I can tell you one thing about my mom uh, and about my, my wife. These two women, I safely trust in them. I, I, I know that when I was growing up, the times that I was sick, my mom was there for me. I remember the times that I was bad, um, and, and my mother was there for me to guide and direct. Now, she would try to kill me at times. Uh, there were times where, where murder was almost committed, and you have to be honest about that. Um, she, she, was very, she was very strict uh, but loving. Uh, she was really good at the, speaking the truth, uh, in love, and somebody said, uh, we, uh, my mom would always say, I only, I only spank you because I love you. And, uh, and I thought to myself, we have a lot of love in this house. There is a lot of love in this house. Uh, but uh, I thank my mom, and I mean that. I, I don't want to put her on the spot too much today, but I, I'm just thankful she's, she's trustworthy. She, when things are down, she's there. Um, I've never, listen, there was a time in my life where somebody walked out of my life that uh, from that day till this has hurt the trust. There's been people that have walked away from my life, and uh, that trust has been broken. Uh, there's people who have lied to me. Uh, there's people who said they loved me, and they didn't love me. Uh, but I can say to you that when things were down, when things were uh, going bad, when things were uh, coming into our family, I can tell you this. One thing I didn't worry about was if mom was going to be there. I didn't worry about, is mom going to go to work and, and make sure we have food? Are we going to be able to go to Christian school? Listen, I just remember thinking in my own mind as a six, seven, eight-year-old, um, I had a lot of doubt in my life of people and, and trust and things like that, but I, I, I could trust in my mom. I could trust my mom was going to be there, and that's what the Bible says. Um, Miss Rachel and I, people sometimes get this idea because I'm a pastor that we don't have any problems. Um, I would say to you that as a pastor, you, your problems are magnified. Your problems are, uh, every little problem can become something huge. The Bible says the little foxes spoil the whole vine. And so we, it's not that we've had a lack of problems. 
But I can tell you this, when things have been down, when I've been sick and when we took those vows at the, at the wedding altar and, and, and we said to each other in sickness and in health, um, I meant that to her that I would be there no matter what, but I'm very thankful she meant that to me. And uh, I think of those, those terrible times of life and those times where um, it feels like you're in a boat and you're just on the ways and you kind of don't know the future you can kind of look up, and, and the person captaining the ship, we of course, we know is the Lord Jesus Christ, but it seems to me that sometimes right beside the Lord Jesus Christ holding that wheel is moms. You know, they're just trustworthy, just there. They're, they're captaining, the, they're guiding the home, they're, they're seeing the storms ahead, they prepare. It's, a, it's an amazing thing to watch the instincts of a mother. My, my wife never took any mother classes, um, and for most of her life, for a lot of her life, I don't say most of her life, for a lot of her life, she didn't have a mother in her home. And so she didn't take mother classes, but there's a motherly instinct that comes out for a woman that is virtuous, a woman that is godly, a woman that, is, that seeks the Lord. The Bible shows us that God implants in them a godly mothering that is trustworthy. Number two, I want to say this in verse number 13, uh, I want to show you the industriousness of this mother, the trustworthiness of this mother, but look at the industriousness of this mother. Verse number 13, she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchants, uh, the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. You could just break every one of these verses down, but I I just want you to see that she's industrious. Uh, She's not, she's not afraid to work with her hands. Um, Back in those days, they would pick the cotton t-shirts didn't just appear Uh, they had to pick the cotton they had to pull the cotton they had to unseed the cotton they had to uh they had to wind the cotton into thread and then they had to then they had to make make uh make garments (laughs) and so uh, she was not she was not uh afraid to work with her hands she wasn't afraid to go out to the field and pick the vegetables and prepare the vegetables and cook the vegetables and, and then serve the vegetables. She wasn't, she wasn't afraid to do these things. She wasn't afraid to go out and get the flax. And she wasn't afraid to go a, a, a long ways to make sure her family was well fed. Uh, I think of when my wife got into couponing. Do you remember that, Rach? <laughs> do you remember couponing? Uh, tell, she had binders, binders of coupons, folks. Those shows that you see of people, extreme couponing, we live that for a little while. Uh, I don't know why we needed 37 shampoos, but we had 37 shampoos in the pantry. It was amazing. Uh, The cleaning supplies never ran out. I had 74 different kinds of deodorant. Uh, We were like a little store for a little while, then, and she got out of it. She realized she wasn't really saving as much money as we thought she was saving. Uh, but, But the industriousness, like... We went through a hard financial time, and what she do? She got a binder of coupons and said, "I'll make this work. I'll bring food into this home. I'll make sure that we, you know, that we save money." And we did save money. I mean, it got us through that time, and eventually, it was too much work. You know, it was just so much work to keep up with it. But her industriousness. Look at s- several more verses. We won't read all the way to twenty-seven, but she riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, a portion to her maidens. She considereth the field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planted the vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strength in her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hands to the poor. This is, this is an amazing woman here. She's industrious. She, she not only takes care of her family, but the Bible starts getting into the fact that she helps the poor. She, she has a ministry towards people who, who don't have and she doesn't have a lot. There's not a passage of Scripture where she, it says that she uh, found a pile of gold and she turned it into clothes and, and stuff for the poor. She was industrious. She turned a little into a lot. Um, and so it, it's amazing to watch this woman's industrialness, even, even reaching out. Uh, she is not afraid of the snow. Uh, this is a rare, resourceful woman. This is a... a a, a woman that you want in your life. You want her to be your wife. You want her to mother your children. You want this woman by your side for life. She is trustworthy and she's industrious. But look at verse 23. Her husband is known in the gates. That's a reference to his business. So the men uh, would have businesses and people would run those businesses and the men would come to the gate as they were more and more prominent in the community 
uh, they, would ri- they would sit in the gates and they would start making decisions for the city and for their communities or for their region of the community. And so the Bible says her husband was known in the gates. Can I just say this, ladies? I, I, I know that many of you work outside the home, and I think that's amazing because I know a lot of ladies that work outside the home and work inside the home, and they keep up with both. But can I just give you a challenge, ladies? Make sure as you're uh, living your life and you have your career and you have your job, be careful that your husband can do his job. The Bible does say he should be the person who is toiling the most. That is what God said to Adam way back at the beginning. He said that he was going to be the toiler. He was going to be the tiller of the fields. And I'm not saying, listen to me, I'm not saying that women can't do anything. Obviously, this woman was probably a harder worker than her husband. She was probably up later than her husband and up earlier than her husband. So I'm not talking about her ability to work. I'm just talking about making sure that her family is in the right priority, making sure that her husband is able to do his job and is good at his job and has everything he needs to do his job, even if we have to work outside the home, ladies. Be careful of that. Uh, God didn't call you to have a career so that your husband suffers and that your children suffer. I do know that. Because God has called even ladies uh, that have to work and that have to go afar and have to do all of these things. The Bible says even they, they're, they're still taking care of their husband. And obviously in this passage, they're still taking care of their children. And so if you have to work outside the home, God bless you. I realize in this culture, there's a lot of times there's two, there's two, um, there's two incomes needed to get through. I mean, it's just a fact of life right now. Uh, and that might be because we live too complicated of lives and we have too many cars and we have too big of houses and, uh, and we have too much stuff to take care of. I don't know. I, I, it, we, it, that's always an introspection we should be doing. Uh, can we downsize? Can we, can, can we have less bills uh, so that we can be? But the ladies should be thinking that way. The Bible says the industriousness, the, the behind the scenes, the workings of the home, the wheels of the home should be turning because of the industriousness of the mother. And the last thing I want to say this this morning, this mother is trustworthy, this mother is industrious, but this this mother is godly. This mother is godly. We could talk about her being equally yoked, how important that is, verse 29. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Um, She was with somebody who, (laughs) who was the same as her. You know, sometimes we, we don't, Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. This is a man that loved his wife and a wife that loved her husband. This is a mother that loved her children, and the Bible says her children loved her. Her children rose up and called her blessed. This is a loving family. This is a working family. This is a family that's equally yoked. Paul tells us, be careful about being unequally yoked. And one of the reasons it's rough and tough being unequally yoked is because the, that person is not paying attention to virtue. That person is not concerned about virtuousness. That other person is not concerned uh, about, uh, they're not looking at you above other people. The Bible says this, this man knew that he was with the right woman. He said, you excel everybody else. There's nobody else that catches my eye. There's nobody else that I'm interested in. There's nobody else that, the Bible says, I trust in her. And the Bible says that she excels all expectations. And so that's the kind of mothers that we should be trying to be. But the Bible says that, we should be, that mothers should be trustworthy, that mothers should be industrious, and that mothers should be godly. Verse 30, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. I love that phrase. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Ladies, it is so important. It's so important that you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Make sure that when you're getting up in the morning, it's not seeking the approval of your children and your husband first, but making sure that you're seeking the approval of God. Making sure that God is giving you wisdom and asking him for that wisdom and that knowledge to guide that house and to guard that house that day. To lift up your husband, to be industrious for your home, to save money where money needs to be saved. To uh, be trustworthy. Ladies, can I, just, can I just give you a challenge? Be careful 
I, I know I've talked to husbands that are uh, that that sometimes doubt and sometimes have insecurities because of their their wives, maybe their social media or the friendships they keep with the opposite sex. Be careful with that. The Bible says that her husband safely trusted her. And by the way, men, <laughs> be careful with the opposite sex also. Uh, this is this goes both ways. Now, men don't sometimes. I, I haven't noticed it a lot on social media. Uh, Christian men with the opposite sex, but. Uh, we've got to guard all these things, men in the workplace, uh, the computer, the chat rooms, the, any of this stuff. It's, it's all can go the wrong direction and lead to the wrong things. I, I'm talking about being trustworthy. And ladies, let's, let's make sure that as we are mothers and, hu- and, and wives to our husbands, that our husbands can safely trust you, that our children can rise up and call you blessed because you're trustworthy, industrious, industrious. Ladies, look around you. God has given you the unique ability to to be the resource person of that home. Uh, the husband might maybe bring home a check. He might bring home uh, the car. He might he might be in charge of certain things. But you're in charge of the industriousness of that home, making sure that it's running smoothly. Sometimes uh, we want to go after certain people in the home, and you spent this and you spent that. Let's get back on the same page. Let's put the ladies in their rightful place in the home and so they, they can be industrious and, and, and do what the Lord would want them to do with what we've been given. And then godly, godly. Trustworthiness, industriousness, and godliness. She is one that feareth the Lord. Ladies, how are we doing in that area? Do we, do we revere God more than we revere uh, the things around us? I know some ladies, I'll give you this challenge, ladies, be careful that your children aren't more, than, more important than God. I've, I've heard people say to me, they've actually said to me, that if they had to choose between their, their spouse and their children, they'd choose their children. Between the church and their children, nobody's going to do this to my children, and they, their children are elevated so much that they are not a godly person. So make sure we're trustworthy, ladies. My challenge to you today is to continue to be industrious, but making sure that we're godly. But husbands, my challenge is to you. Look at that, look at that passage one more time, just real quick. Proverbs chapter 31. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters are done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. I want you to see that her husband also, and he praiseth her. Husbands, when you get back on it, thanking the wife that God has given us, thanking the mother of our children, appreciating what they're doing, the industriousness they do show. Uh, I, I see some of these kids show up in church, and they, they, they're like three years old. They match. They got bow ties on and little suit coat. I'm like, these mothers are amazing to be able to do all that on a Sunday morning before they come to church. And uh, mothers, I, I appreciate you. I, I was trying to figure out the other day if my wife does three or four loads of laundry per week. It, it was thousands and thousands of loads of laundry that she's done. How many meals she's cooked. If you just do the math, guys, I, I've been married 20 years. Uh, you, you could talk about the uh, the times that she's uh, started some businesses and, and brought f- money into the home. We went to Di- we we could not have gone to Disney without my wife's industriousness. She got on eBay and sold on eBay and did all this stuff. And we went to Disney. I think I I think I spent five hundred dollars of our own money on Disney uh, for some food on the way down and back in the hotel and and rental car or something like that. But uh, she she paid for the entire thing by her industriousness. And and that's a, maybe a silly example to you, but but I would say to you that. Whatever your, whatever your spouse is doing, whatever your, uh, the mother of your children is doing, whatever your mother has done, it's time that the Bible says that we, we, we speak up and we praise her. We speak up and we praise uh, what God has done in our lives by giving us these women. And King Lemuel was blessed to have uh, his mother teach him these things, and it's a blessing that as we teach that we are challenged to be those kind of men to be those kind of women, and of course, to appreciate the women that God has put into our life. Well, I'm going to uh, stop here with the message today, but in just a moment, we're going to pick back up, and ladies, don't move. 
Uh, we want you to uh, participate in this drawing here in just a few minutes, and we want to see who wins. I'm going to be watching. I'm going to be, uh, I have no idea who's won what yet, so uh, my wife will be drawing that. I'll get to see that for the very first time when you see it, and I'm excited about that. And uh, I hope that you'll take Proverbs 31 and, and not just treat it as, oh, that's a passage for moms. That's a passage for, for wives. Ladies, if you're not married, it's a passage for you to attain to. If you're a wife but not a mother yet, this is a passage for you to attain to. If you're a young man, you should want to uh, be this kind of young man as his mother taught him to be. And then secondly, search for the virtuous woman uh, because I can tell you this, your life will be very, very blessed. If you find a virtuous woman, I can tell you that. Uh, her price is far above rubies. If somebody walked in that back door right now and handed me a bag of rubies and said, the exchange for this million dollars or five million dollars of rubies is we have to take your wife away, I'd say, you can have those rubies uh, because it's far, her price is far above rubies. But as I think of my own life, I think of my mom and uh, her children rise up and call her blessed. And uh, I am blessed to have my mom. I am blessed that God gave me this mother. I am blessed that she trained and taught me. I, I am blessed that uh, at times she had to be the mom, the dad, the disciplinarian, the teacher, the judge, all of those things. Uh, I am blessed. Uh, and I call her today blessed. She is a, a, a blessed uh, person. She's a blessed mother. She's a blessed woman to have in my life. So as you can see, I'm very blessed on this Mother's Day, and uh, I hope that you are. Pick up the phone and call your mom, write an email, uh, send a text, do something to show your mom uh, that she is uh, blessed and that her price is far above rubies. She's precious, she's rare, and she's resourceful. God bless you, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. Stay, uh, stay tuned for just a minute here, and my wife will do the, the uh, drawings in just a moment. God bless. Well, ladies, I hope you enjoyed that service. Um, we enjoyed putting it on. I know each of us had a part in this uh, Mother's Day event. It's not our normal Mother's Day event, but we each wanted to do something very special for you. And so uh, you guys got those great baskets. Miss Michelle worked really hard on those, and those are adorable, and we love them, and they have chocolate in them, so that will work for every mother. And then the music was fantastic. Thank you, Miss Lauren, for putting all those groups together and working with everyone. And thank you for everyone who participated in that. And now, I hope you enjoyed the video presentation, too. That's something that um, me and my girls worked in. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that was Autumn singing in the background of that video. But I hope you enjoyed all of that. But now we have some fun things to give away because, you know, as part of my pastor's wife duties, I had to wander through the aisles of Target this week and throw things in my cart that I love that I'm going to now give away to you. I wish that would have been fun just to, no. <laughs> this is better. This is better. So in these boxes of wonder that the ladies have beside them, these are basically all my findings through every store. If I said, ooh, I would love that, I put it in my cart. And so I figured if I would love it, you probably would love it too. So um, in my, every, when I do the kids' story hour, I have my M&M jar with all of their names in it. Well, this week it has all of your names, all the moms in the church. Um, and some, uh, maybe you are a member of the church, but maybe you've come in the last few months, we've put your name in there, or maybe I know that you're watching on live stream or you're participating in the five questions. Um, we've put your names in there because, you know, we want to do something special for you right now, too. So... Um, we are going to start pulling stuff out and we're going to draw names and if we draw your name then it's yours and we will get with you if you're going to be swinging by the church you can grab it or maybe we'll deliver it to your house we'll, we'll get with you on um, how you want to get access to what you want but so we're just going to start right now so we'll start with Miss Michelle why don't you reach in your box of wonder and pull out the first item Ooh. It says, love builds a happy home. I tried to go with pretty neutral things so it could work in anybody's house. This is from Target. It's very well made. It's kind of even heavy. Um, and then we'll have Miss Lauren pick our first name for the pillow. Barbara Hemming. Barb Hemming. Very good. I'm going to tape your name right on it so we don't forget. And then you can okay. figure out a place for that. And Miss Lauren, you can pull our next item out. Home sweet home. This is like a porch rug. 
It's very awkward. We'll go together. <laughs> um, and so it's for an outside. I got one of these because I wanted one of these. I'm like, ooh, I need that. So I figured you would too. So um, we'll have Miss Michelle pull the name out for this one. Vanessa Hopper. Vanessa Hopper. Well, it's a good thing Miss Lauren didn't pull that out. We'd say it was rigged. <laughs> All right. All right. You have our next thing over here. All right. All right. So this is like a, a serving caddy. You can put like your forks and your spoons and your knives. And I got this because I'm always thinking I need one of those when I have a picnic or whatever. I put all the cups in, or like in a red solo cup and then it, the wind blows right. it over every time. Yeah. So I thought I could use that. Helen Hyrack. Helen Hyrack. All right, Helen, you will get the serving caddy. All right, Miss Lauren, what you got up next? A wax warmer. Okay, so this is a wax warmer. It has some wax melts too. Um, it's a box and it says home. I figured that would be cute for. Oh, yes. What are the flavors? Flavors? Bahama Breeze and White Strawberry Bloom. Ooh. Katie Eichenberg. Katie Eichenberg, a wax warmer. Thank you. Be... <laughs> Stress <laughs> reliever. <laughs> All right. I have to put it up high. All right. All right. Got our next. Yes, put it up high. Katie's like, no, that will get on my carpet. Can I the open it? Yeah, go ahead. I've always wanted a clear umbrella. <laughs> I have no idea cool. why. Cool. Yeah, isn't it cool? Because yeah. like when it's raining really hard and you have to pull yeah, your umbrella you way low and then you can't see where you're going. <laughs> and it's it matches perfect. everything yes. because it's clear. Okay. So I don't know why I've always wanted a clear umbrella, but I have always wanted a clear <laughs> umbrella. Sharon Womack. Sharon Womack, Ooh. you get a clear umbrella. Okay, I can't get that down. Okay. Everyone's going to think I'm so schizophrenic on the stuff that I want. But. All right. Backpack purse. This is like a backpack purse. It's kind of, I don't know if you can, it's kind of a brownish kind of mauve-ish. So, Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, I like it too. And I like the backpack purses because then your hands are free. I'm still playing with this. So I figured it would be, I'll draw this one. Okay. There you go. Let's see. The winner is Liz Cunt. Kuncher. Kuncher, right? Kuncher. Not Kuncher. Is Kuncher. it Kuncher? Uh -huh. Liz, congratulations. You get the backpack yes. first. Very nice. All right. So Miss Michelle, you're up. Okay. <laughs> there we go. All right. This is a three-piece wall set. It says, well, uh, we love unconditionally. And then it's got some accent pieces there. And so I figured it's pretty neutral. It could go in anyone's home. Valerie Card. Valerie, oh. congratulations. All right, Miss so Lauren, what do you have? Oh, man. Th this Lantern. is a, a little random, but I love Edison bulbs. And so it's uh, like you can set it outdoor. It's battery operated, so it doesn't have to be plugged in. And it has an Edison bulb in the middle of it. And Does it light up? I didn't put batteries in it. Uh, I should push, have. Push the button. Or does it? Tag. Does it have a button? Oh, there it is. Yep. Oh, it does. Okay. Ooh, very cute. So that I I don't know why I love Edison bulbs so much, but I do. Because they're big and clunky and yeah. elegant. All right. Beth Hecathorn, you get the outdoor lantern. Ooh. All right. Um. All right. This is a um, pitcher, uh, not a water, but yeah, you like <laughs> turn the thing. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. there you gotcha. go. Um, and it is actually plastic. It's not glass. The, I was at Target and the guy checking me out, he was wrapping it up really <laughs> careful <laughs> in paper. And I just let him go. And he dropped it on the floor. And... <laughs> but it is plastic because it's very moms nice. have kids at home most of the time. Tanya Clay. Tanya Clay, Ooh. you get this serving pitcher. It's a housewarming or... gift. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> For the graduation parties that will be coming up. There you go. All right. Okay. All right. Wireless speaker. Okay. So this is a Bluetooth wireless speaker. I bought one of these recently, and I've been, I have been—I put it in the backyard, and I just sit out there and blare <laughs> it as loud as I possibly can because what else is there to do right now, right? Right. right exactly. So I figured other people might want one. Drown out the howling. Yes. <laughs> Oops. 
Katie Drexler. All right, Katie, Ooh. get the outdoor, or not, the Bluetooth wireless speaker, not necessarily outdoor. All right. Um, all right. This is one of those serving trays. I just thought it was really pretty. It's it pretty. pretty. It has like the distressed tin, that light. I like the color of that wood. Yes. It's like not too light, not too dark. So, For breakfast in bed. For yeah, months. there you go. That's right. Megan Connolly. Megan Connolly. Ooh. So you get breakfast in bed. Tell your husband. That's right. He's a, is he a chef? I thought he was a chef. Oh, no, that's, that's, uh. You will be this weekend. That's the <laughs> other sister. Um, but, uh, yeah, so you get breakfast in bed, and you get this tray, and he can bring it right to you. That'll be wonderful. A water bottle. All right, so this is a water bottle. It's glass, because. Like, that's good and that's bad, but yes. I thought it was It would be cool. bad for me. So, hopefully. <laughs> I think Snakes. they're pretty, like... They're pretty durable. Pretty yeah. durable, yeah. yeah. And so and it's got, and like, a bamboo stays, top. and so. Everything stays really, really cold yes. for a really long time. I just... I felt like I would be a cool mom if I walked around with this water bottle. You would be totally. And so that's why I got it, because <laughs> I thought it'd be cool. All right. Keep having two. Eleanor Anderson. Eleanor Anderson. You get to be the cool one be cool with the cool one. water bottle. That's right. All right. Okay. The last one in Miss Michelle's box of mystery. I love wind chimes. Um, my husband hates wind chimes, so that's why I don't have any wind chimes. But I love them. And when I did my shows where I would sell different items, if I had wind chimes, they sold so fast because yeah. everyone loves them. So yeah. I figured it would be a good Mother's Day gift. It's like, it's like looks like driftwood up here and like peacock feathers. So. Yeah. Uh, Carol Larkin. Carol Larkin. Ooh. You get the wind chime. Very nice. Why don't you put that on there? Okay. Is this your last yes, one? Last All right, last item. This is a um, stand. This, this would be good because it's like non-breakable for those of you who like have little kids. It's like tin. It's <laughs> being noisy. Apparently. Yeah, really. Um, it says, this is us. Our story, our life, our home. And it's very cute and cottagey looking and I liked it. And I like that it stood up by itself too and that it can't be broken yes. easily. That's yeah, always a good. Sure. All right, last one. Vicki James. Vicki James. All right. Well, congratulations to everyone that won. I believe that's our last item. And uh, now you all know what to shop for me for now. I'm just <laughs> These are um, things I thought you all would love. So uh, thank you so much for um, participating in our Mother's Day service. Thank you for bringing your family and watching it. And we miss you all, and we love you, and we will see you hopefully very, very, very soon. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day.